first of all as you can see this inverse trigonometric functions we are not hearing this word for the first time trigonometric functions trigonometric terms functions you have already seen that isn't it if you remember your class 11 chapter 3 we have learned about all the trigonometric functions so i would like to write this them down first then we will proceed so the basic concepts were simply how many trigonometric functions were there num 6 6 right up to this first one is your sine function now here i will mention the function and you have to tell me what was its domain and range what's the domain of the sine function sine function is a function from r set of real numbers to images what were its images what possible values we can have for sine mam 0 to 1 only 0 to 1 mam minus 1 only minus 1 to 1 right similarly i have cosine function but the cosine function also domain was still the same that is r but what about the range the range is again same minus 1 to 1 we have seen that and next we have next function was tangent function whose domain was given by now here is the problem can can we have 10 of any theta for any angle do we have any problem or we can find the tan of any angle here we have seen that you know that like tan pi by 2 is not defined tan c pi by 2 is not defined so in such cases you have to remove all these odd multiples of pi by 2 odd multiples of pi by 2 has to be removed reason because at these points my tan function is not equal this is my domain here okay what is the range of this function answer can be any real number for tan we don't have any kind of restriction so answer can be any real number tangent function is fine let's come to the next which is cosine function sorry cosecant cosecant means what it is simply the reciprocal of sine function if i will talk about the domain domain is still the same real numbers but at points where sine will become zero cosec will become not defined right so i have to remove those points at which my sine will become zero what are these points where sine becomes zero yes kanika at what points my sine becomes zero Zero degree by two degree and three sixty degree. Zero. Yes, okay. Any angle which is the multiple of pi, x is equals to n pi, where n is an integer, like one pi, two pi, three pi. For all these, my sign becomes zero. and we know that at zero if you will take its reciprocal it will become not defined so this is the reason i have to remove it from there so that's why i have to mom set of real numbers and range will be set of real numbers from this to minus 1 to 1 so that we have just started we are just revising the basic concepts of the trigonometric functions from our previous standard and later on we will start with the inverse after cosecant we need to what we we have learned about the second function what was the domain of the second function second function now second function is the reciprocal of cos 
if we are going to take a reciprocal of cos i have to be very careful where cos will become zero at what points my cos is zero mam 90 degree yes everyone 90 degree or these are the points we have seen that we can put so many angles now all the odd multiples of pi by 2 we have to remove these points so that we can and for this second function also since we are going to take the reciprocal of the numbers lying between minus 1 to 1 answer is r minus minus 1 to 1 means minus 1 to 1 should be solved real numbers were in the range and last was the cot cotangent function that is cot function which is the reciprocal of 10 and we know that again same thing we have to remove those points at which 10 uh, sin becomes zero sin upon cos is there right we have to remove some points at which my function will become not defined at what points my 10 is not defined where 10 will become zero 10 will become zero at what points where x is a multiple of pi so these are the domain and range of the functions that you might have learned in your previous session and that will be used so this was what we have some learned that what is my domain what's the range for these trigonometric functions basically trigonometric functions for what what kind of functions were there they were simply the types of the functions in which we will input something and we will have an output so in this case of trigonometric functions what what we were giving as an input what we were trying to give as an input yes here in this trigonometric functions how was it working it is like suppose i have a machine which is called trigonometric functions machine in this trigonometric functions whatever function you have chosen like if it is sin function cos function any function you can take here but how we were finding their values what you were doing there in this case i was giving input in input i was giving the angles right Like what is sine thirty degree? What is sine forty five degree? What is sine cos hundred and five degree? Cos two three four zero degree. So in these cases, what you were giving as an input, we were trying to give angles as an input, right? We were having angles as an input in this machine, and after processing, we were getting output. and that output was nothing but the values of the angles value of these angles okay so in this trigonometric function we have seen we will give angle as an input output will be the value for example if suppose this is my sin function is there and i am going to find out what will be the value of sin 20 degree 120 degree means i have given 120 degree as an input If you want, you can convert it in terms of radians also. Two by two pi by three as an input, and I was getting output. What was my output? Sine one twenty degrees. How much? Forty by two. So I was getting a value. This was what we have learned in our trigonometric function. right this is nothing new you that is almost everything you have done that and their graphical representation also but now what we are going to do before coming to that i would just like to ask what do we know about these functions what kind of functions are these if you will look at the graph of the sin cosine functions you might have observed that it repeats their value after a certain interval of time right we have actually done that if i will draw the graphs we have seen 
after completing one cycle the values of the trigonometric function starts repeating this is the advantage that you can find a value for any angle isn't it if i have to look for the sine this is how we define it mine is not proper let me draw that again if you have seen the graphs of the sine or cosine function you might have seen their values starts repeating after certain interval of time they repeats their value and the same process goes with other trigonometric functions as well this is the graph of the sine function which is not very perfect but just to give you the idea then we have the cos function and similarly if i will talk about the tan one what was the graph of tan like this here at pi by 2 it was not defined that's why so what we are trying to see here we will just trying to see that here these graphs were given of these functions which simply tells us the value of these trigonometric functions starts repeating means same value can be taken as for different angles right like suppose if you will find sin 60 degree that is also going to give you root 3 by 2 and sin 120 degree which also gave you the root 3 by 2 it means it is possible that for some value i can have more than one inputs means more than one inputs can also give us the same output that is possible and periodic function basically means after certain period of time if the function starts repeating we will say the function is periodic all right this is clear now let's try to talk about the one by function one by one how do, what do we mean by the inverse trigonometric functions so what we will try to do first we would like to draw do a little rearrangement and what is that this time i am not going to give input as an angle this is my simple one this is the sine sin graph please don't find it's not lo looking properly but this is my sine function that i have whose root range was set of all real numbers and domain was minus 1 to 1 now what we are trying to do we want to define a function which is called inverse trigonometric function if i will say inverse sin function means what sin inverse function is basically going to be just inverse of the whole process it means for if in the earlier case you were trying to give angle as an input and my output was coming out to be the values but now let's change it a little bit this time i am going to give input as an value and output will be my angle it means what it means you is if suppose 1 by 2 is written now you have to tell me for what angle sin theta will be 1 by 2 you have to tell me the angle for what angle it is going to be true So this is what we are trying to construct with this sine inverse function. Can you tell me for what kind of angles I will have one by two? Mom, thirty degrees. Mom, thirty. Is it going to be the only one? No, no. You can see, I have so many one. possible values. Not one, infinitely many values for this case. 
understood what i am trying to say here in this 1 by 2 can be an answer of more than one but if you remember what we have learned for the definition of the functions functions is what what is the definition of the function divya do you remember well for being a function it was necessary that every input should have only one output that is okay so many inputs can give you one same output but one input cannot give you more than one output so this is the problem here you can see that now the problem arises if you if somebody is asking you what will be the sin inverse of 1 by 2 it means you have to tell us for what angle 1 by 2 will be the value of sin so somebody said 30 degree some of them are going to say say other different different like 390 degree okay any so many angles are possible so in such cases that's the problem but how to get rid of it we said okay what if i will limit the choices for my angles this time what i am going to do instead of talking about the whole curve you know that this curve will repeat itself again and again this is what we have observed right you can clearly see the graph of the sine function will repeat again and again but now what i will do i will just try to find this if suppose you have to draw the graph of this function what will you do you will try to find out the smallest repetitive unit then you will complete the pattern isn't it like suppose i have a very complex design or pattern something like this which has been made by so many repetitive units so if you want to construct this shape what will you do like suppose if i will talk about the basketball patterns you know that these some kinds of the polygons are going to be made on on that so this whole box what you will try to do you will try to find out the smallest pattern to make it then after doing its repetition you will have the whole picture but what the simple task is to how to draw this if you can draw this one by using the repetitive units you can complete the whole picture so just like that if i have this sine function and if i will look at graph i need to understand i need to find such a condition that if i will take this much part i'm good to go i will cover all the possible values so i have to take only those list of the functions first of all that are the main and second thing they will cover all the possible angles but only once means no more repetition so what is the smallest part that we can observe here so if you will do here you can see if i will take this minus half minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 in this interval you can see that the value of sin is not going to be repeated isn't it if you look at this yellow unit in these i am covering all the values lying between 1 to minus 1 isn't it this can be seen so here yes so what we will try to do we will try to construct a sine inverse function in which i will restrict my range so it means how to avoid this confusion we will say okay first of all we are going to do the inverse part so this means sin inverse function is going to be function from minus 1 to 1 why minus 1 to 1 because input cannot be a greater than 1 if, if you will find ask me find the value of theta for which sin is 2 is it possible no it's not possible so whenever we find the inverse usually we just change the range to be my domain but here i cannot tell give us all the real numbers because the problem is in such cases you will see just like your 1 by 2 every angle will have infinitely many outputs which is not very convenient for us 
so just to get rid of this problem what i will do i will restrict my range here and what range i will take i should take such a range that will contain all the angles but only once none of the angles should be left out so just look at this yellow one you can see that so here is my range if i will take minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 this is called principal range principal range means this is the main range and everything is going after this is just a repetition of these quantities that's it okay the process is clear what we have done here we are just trying to construct the inverse of this function earlier you you were giving angle as an input output was an answer this time value as an input output as an angle so here if suppose somebody is asking you tell us what will be the value of what will be the value of sin inverse 1 it means what what will you tell me here you have to tell me Thank for you. yes for what angle sin inverse is 1 90 degree mom 90 Sine inverse sine ninety. No, not. Uh, you can simply write like this as well. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So fine. So the answer will be pi by two. Okay. Otherwise, what you are suggesting is that sine inverse one can be written as sine pi by two. So sine inverse sine of pi by two means final answer again. That is okay. But you can simply use this notation. Okay. Now suppose somebody is asking you find the value of sine inverse minus one by two. You have to tell me the angle for which sine is minus one by two. How to do that? And your answer should always whatever answer you are getting, whatever angle you are getting, you have to ensure that it should lie inside our range. So now, if somebody is asking me what will be the value of sine inverse minus one by two, I need to find such an angle. Oh, minus sine inverse one by two. Sine inverse minus one by two. For what angle it is going to be negative? Look at the graph. You can see that I am getting minus one by two. Minus one by two is somewhere. Why? Our kya? Yaha pe somewhere. It means your angle is going to be negative on this side, na? Negative side. So my angle is going to be just negative. One by two is at thirty degree. So sine inverse minus one by two will be at minus thirty degree, which is minus pi by six. And please use the radian notation here. We won't be working on this angle notation anymore. So how to calculate this inverse part? Is it clear to you guys? Ma'am, yes. Ma'am, like in sine theta when theta is negative, so its sine comes out. So for sine inverse also, we can we say that minus one by two is minus sine came out. No, 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 not think like that. It's not like that. Okay, the minus will come out. No, we will talk about the properties. We are just trying to fix. Find out for what angle it is minus one by two. It does not works like this. The minus is so let's write minus outside. It doesn't work like this. You might be thinking sine के लिए कर रहा है, but not always. So don't think like okay. that. Okay. And if I have to draw the graph of sine function, this time you can see I have the limits. What's that? My x-axis will take all those values. From minus one to one, right? Because of this is my this. So suppose here is minus one, and here is one, and the angles are going to be same, minus pi by two to pi by two. If I will draw the graph of this function sine inverse, it's like snake. It's like snake function. so sometimes they can also ask you to find the value of this also graph also show the graph 
ओके एंड एक्चुअली ये जो वन एंड माइनस वन है दीज आर द पॉइंट एट विच द फंक्शन इज अटेनिंग देयर मैक्सिमम वैल्यू सो दे नीड टू बी लिटल बिट क्लोजर दिस इज इज देयर ना दैट्स माइनस वन दैट्स वन All right. So the idea for sine inverse is clear. Just like we did, did for the sine inverse, we will do the constructions for the cos inverse part. So let's go ahead. For the cos inverse, again I know the cos function is same. Real numbers two minus one to one. But how to? Construct this cosine function. Cos inverse. Okay, so let's talk about the cosine function. Similarly, my function was what for the cosine function. If I have to talk about cosine inverse, how we will consider construct this one? Cos inverse, and this time my domain of this function is minus one to one. Whatever range was there in your previous part. Means if you remember whatever were the range of your previous functions, जो भी आपकी range थी, that will become my domain of the inverse part. Okay, and what will be the range here? Range is going to be different. For in case of cos, I have to take zero to five, because this is the reason that will cover all the cases. If you remember the graph of the cos, how does the graph of the cos looks like? Not like that. Right. So now again, I have to take such cases that will consider all the values between one to minus one. So look at this reason. This is the repetitive unit. It will contain all the values on the y-axis. One to the k minus one. All of them are going to be covered, right? All of these are going to be covered. So here my range is going to be zero to pi here. So zero to pi will be the principal range. So next time, whenever you have to find the cos inverse of something, you will always tell the answer. Or always tell us the angle that will lie in zero to pi, not others, because this will guarantee you will have only one answer. This is again the principal range of cos inverse is zero to pi. So remember this one. If suppose somebody is asking you what will be the value of cos inverse one over root two, it means what you have to tell us for what angle. Cos is going to be one over root two. Pratyush, can you tell me the answer for this one? Ma'am, if we convert the one by root two to cos forty-five degrees. Pi by pi by two. Pratyush, 
What will be the answer? Ingredients. Ingredients. Forty-five degree. Yes, five by four. So you have to check. Is it? Does it lies in my range? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So that's the correct answer. Always remember, even if you are sometimes, if any bigger angle comes. You need to just do a rearrangement because your answer should always lie in your range. Let's do one more. What if I need to find the value of cos inverse minus one by two? For what value of theta cos is minus one by two? Ma minus sixty degree. Minus pi by six. If you will write minus pi by six, now that's the problem. Why? Does it lies in my range? Ma'am, minus pi by three. Does it lies in my principal range? No, ma'am. So what I have to do? I have to do such an angle which will lie in my principal range, and for that purpose, I need to add pi to it. If I will add pi to it, it will become two pi over three. So that's the answer. Does it lies in my range? Two pi over three? Yes, it lies in our range. So we are good to go. So this is the point. You need to always check your final answer should always lie in your principal range. For this purpose, you have to remember all the range, domain and range, especially especially sine inverse, cos inverse, and tan inverse. So cos inverse is fine. Similarly, you can do the construction. I will just write it directly. For tan inverse, domain is we can take any real number. That was not a problem. But for the range, I will take minus pi by two to pi by two. Why not close interval? Because at pi by two, tan function is not defined. So I will take only open minus pi by two to pi by two. All right. Now these were sine, cos, tan. So if suppose somebody is asking you what will be the value of tan inverse one, what will be the answer, Kanika? For what value of theta tan is going to be one, and your answer should lie in your range? Five by six. Yes. Five by two. Why five by two? Why pi by two? Did you? Abhi to bataya pi by two ke tan is not defined. Mom pi by four. Pi by four. Okay. Pi by pi by two is what? Tan or at pi by two is undefined. So how can it be? We are talking about one. That is again pi by four. Check whether it, does it lies in my principal range? Yes, it lies. Parul, does it lies in our range? Yes, ma'am. So that's good. Now, come to the next. I need to find what will be the value of tan inverse minus one over root three. Ma'am, example, we are going to do pi by four. Yes, ma'am. Which is tan inverse one? Which angle is it? Or what angle it is? Forty-five degree, right? Yes, ma'am. Forty-five degree in terms of radians is how much? Mom, pi by two. Pi by two. Mom, pi by two. To convert your angle in degrees from radian, you have to do what? Pi over one eighty, right? Just complete this calculation. Mom, pi by four. So that's how it is coming, okay? Yes, ma'am. Now you need to find out what is tan inverse of minus one over root three. What will be the value of this one? Okay, minus pi over six. That's ten thirty. So yeah, minus, yeah, but negative one. So minus pi by six. Does it lies in our range? Yes, it lies. If it lies in my range, that's okay. I don't have to worry anything about it. We can just proceed. 
If does not, then you have to do little rearrangement to get it inside our domain range. So this was about the tan inverse. Similarly, let's do for the cosec inverse. So suppose I have this function cosec inverse, and for this my domain is going to be set up all real numbers except minus one to one. Because cosec की range ये होती है. Now what about the principal range here? In this principal range, I will. This principal range is actually going to be say similar to your sine inverse. Sine inverse जैसा ही same रहेगा. But the problem is, you know that cosec is the inverse of sine. If cosec is the inverse of sine, and if sine is zero, can we have the value for cosec? No, we cannot have. This will become not defined, undefined. So that's the problem. So just remove the point where sine will become zero. At what point sine sine is zero? Zero degree. Zero degree. So from minus pi by two to pi by two, I have to remove zero. We have to exclude this. Similarly, for sec inverse, the range is still the same. Sorry, domain is still the same minus one to r minus one to one, but here you have to take the range principal range of cos. Same problem. You will see there will be a point at which cos will become zero. If my cos is zero, sec is undefined. So for what angle cos is zero? Nine degree. Pi by two. So we will exclude this. This is the range. Similarly, if I have to talk about cot inverse, cot inverse all possible real numbers, and here open interval zero to pi. That's it. Open intervals why? Because at zero ten will become zero, so I have to exclude. At pi ten will become zero, so I have to exclude. This is the reason we have taken open interval zero to pi. So these are the range that you need to remember. Sometimes they will ask you to write down the principal range for one marker directly. So don't get confused about it. Similarly, like suppose if someone is asking find the value of cosec inverse two. Yes, what will be the answer for cosec inverse two? For what angle cosec is two? Pi by six. How much? Pi by six. Pi over six. Sine thirty. That is cos thirty. Yes. Does it lies in our range? Yes. So we are done. Okay. Next, what about the value of sec inverse minus two? Yes, sec inverse minus two will be what? First of all, find for sec inverse. For what value of theta sec is two? Mom minus pi by six. Same. Minus pi by three. Minus pi by three is not the correct answer. Reason. It is not pi is number. Not included in our range. So we have to add pi to it. So the answer will become two pi over three. Okay, understood? Ma'am. Yes. Ma'am, why does minus pi by pi not pi in my case? See, second was minus two was there. If it was plus two, you will take pi by three. But it is minus two, so the negative angle is coming for this. But look at the definition. I don't have any negative angles in my range, so I cannot write this to be an answer. So to make it positive, I am adding pi. Pi is basically means we are shifting towards the positive side. That is what. If something is in on the negative side, if I will add 
this exactly will thing will be there as it is but on the positive side this is how we are doing it okay we are just shifting it to the other side the role is exactly the same because the graph is you know it remains same every time if you if you have to interpret it through the graph it suppose you tell me that value is going to be at minus 5 by 6 we are getting minus 2 or whatever number let's not take minus 2 suppose minus 1 over root 3 Minus one over two is there. So suppose some, this is the point. Can you see this? Let me use another one. Can you see this point? Yes. This red one. Yes. Now what I am trying to do, I want to see that at which point it will correspond if I will shift it to the positive side. It means you have to choose exactly the same point that will lie in my principal range. Look at this question. This is the angle at which it will lie. So instead of writing this negative angle, I can write this positive one. The values will still remains the same, okay? But I have shifted it to the positive side. We are just doing the correspondings. कि किस point पे आपका positive मिल रहा है. This is what we are trying to do here. Understood? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so this is fine. Let's move to the next one. What if we have to find the value of cot inverse root three? Find it out. How much it will be? Five by six. Yes, five by six. Does it lies in our range? Yes, ma'am. So we are good to go. No problem, right? So let's do one more. Find out what is cos inverse minus one over root two. Do the fourth part also. Five by six. Here it's negative. We will translate it to the positive side. This will give us three pi by four. Come to the cosec inverse. Minus five by six. Here, there it's not a problem. Minus five by four is okay. But what about cot inverse minus one? Pratyush, what will be the value of cot inverse minus one? Three point two eight minus five. But look at the range. Does it lies in my range? Uh, no, ma'am. So what we have to do? Change. Add pi, right? Yes, ma'am. Find pi rules. Minus five by four plus five. That will be three pi minus five. Ha. Three pi over four, right? Pi minus five. Yes. So this is see how simple it is. You just need to remember the principal range. If you will remember your principal range, you can solve these questions very easily. Just keep on checking. Whether it is an edge or not, so but you have to remember the stable domain and range part. Okay, try to remember all these things, and in the next session, and we are good to do with our first NCERT exercise. You can do your first exercise from your NCERT, and in the next session 